more than 75 years, Berkeley has been at the forefront of music education. And its alumni have been pioneers throughout the industry. Challenging the status quo. And breaking through barriers of all kinds. Traveling the globe with legends. Performing, recording, and producing. Spanning culture, genre, and style. Setting the bar ever higher. Welcoming change. And becoming legends themselves. There is no limit to the power of the Berkeley alumni community. And as it is ever more important to create change, it is equally important to recognize the next class of pioneers, record breakers, and chart toppers. And as alumni stand ready to blaze new trails and bring the industry to new heights, they yet again prove that music, music is, is everywhere. everywhere. And everywhere there's music, there's, there's Berkeley. Berkeley. Good evening, Berkeley alumni. My name is Fritz Kuhnlins, and I'm the Senior Director of Alumni Affairs for Berkeley. Tonight, I have the great honor of kicking off our 2021 Alumni Achievement Awards. Tonight's program features an array of speakers, performers, faculty, alumni, and students as we come together as a community to recognize a group of alumni who, through great talent and ceaseless effort, have found success in the industry. They come from many backgrounds, many states and countries, some for being in the spotlight, others for their choice to manage from the back. They all, however, share a common experience in Berkeley and together showcase an incredible spectrum of success one can achieve with their Berkeley education. Tonight's program celebrates excellence. We also celebrate Berkeley's 75 years of musical education excellence. Berkeley has gone from the music school down on Newberry Street to the world's preeminent institution for contemporary music, theater, and dance. Berkeley is known for its great ability to train the best artists, musicians, dancers, but also engineers, songwriters, arrangers, composers, and so much more. When Lawrence Burke established Berkeley's precursor, Schillinger House, in 1945, he was looking for a place to connect, share, and create his passion for contemporary music. His revolutionary musical dream balked convention and sought to create music that was centered around the artist. Jazz provided the mechanism for musical freedom of expression, improvisation, and also allowed some rule breaking. Today, the Berkeley experience has grown from those humble beginnings. Alumni artists like Quincy Jones, Melissa Etheridge, John Mayer, Esperanza Spalding, Wang Lee Home, these giants of stage and sound have sculpted our understanding of music and musicianship. They too have shown us music needs expression, improvisation, and the need to break rules from time to time. This year's list of honorees all showcase the tremendous skill and opportunity our alumni hold in their Berkeley education. And through great expression, improvisation, and breaking industry conventions have found great success in the music, theater, and dance that they love. These alumni demonstrate that showing up being prepared, and being open to the possibilities form the starting line to a long and endlessly fruitful career in the industry. It is no wonder they are sought out time and time again by the industry's biggest stars. With that, I have the great honor to recognize our first two recipients, Mindy Abair and Jared Braverman. Let's learn a little more about each honoree. Hi, I'm Karen Bell, and I am so glad to be here on behalf of Mindy Abair. Mindy, congratulations and surprise. Wow, I've known you for over 30 years. How did that happen? You were blazing new trails at Berkeley and you've been blazing new trails ever since in your career. I've watched you challenge yourself as an artist and claim victory every single time. You are an incredible role model, an incredible artist, an incredible person. And it is my pleasure to celebrate you as an Alumni Achievement Award recipient. Congratulations, Mindy. Mindy A. Bear, the rock, blues, jazz saxophonist 
singer and songwriter who plays with the greats, champions artists' rights, and taught the world what it means to say, That's pretty good for a girl. From the earliest days of watching your father shimmy on stage, you knew that music was in your DNA. Drawing inspiration from the likes of Cannonball Adderley, Booker T. Jones, the Rolling Stones, and Bruce Springsteen, you carry the baton of sax playing, showing it defies genre and affirming its mark front and center on the world stage. You arrived at Berkeley a self-taught musician, eager to learn and to find your place in the music industry. With your peers, you aimed to break the glass ceiling in music and show the world what it means to be a modern female musician. I found Mindy to be a, you know, a very hard worker and a very ambitious person. I could see from the beginning that she was going to be a success story. She was like one of three women that were here. So, you know, it was, it was challenging for her to compete with, you know, a male-based community, but she did really well, and, and I really credit her for that. Early success led you to tour with the likes of Tina Marie, Duran Duran, Adam Sandler, Jonathan Butler, Mandy Moore, and the Backstreet Boys. After signing a deal with Verve Records, you kicked off a solo career that resulted in 10 number one radio singles, two number one Billboard jazz albums, and four solo albums that have landed number five and above on the Billboard contemporary jazz charts. She's hung in there and reinvented herself over and over again, finding new ways to express herself and um, as a vocalist, as a player, as a writer, she's gotten better and better and better and she's just enjoyed the journey and learning. And I think she's just getting started, actually. Aside from performing, you use your many talents to give back, serving as a national trustee for the Recording Academy and having served for 10 years in the Los Angeles chapter as a governor, secretary, and president. You have a passion for putting others first, contributing to the Grammy Music Education Coalition. The music industry is fortunate that your passion for helping others is only rivaled by your passion for performing. Mindy Hebert, for your ability to move and inspire others with your empowering performing and songwriting, for putting others first in advocating for the music community, and for being a role model for the next generation of women musicians, we recognize your achievement. Surprise! Jared, I know how much you hate surprises, awards, and really anything that involves people conspiring behind your back to give you something awesome, but Jeff and I are not sorry, and we hope that you can take this moment to sit back and celebrate all that you've achieved and accomplished that's got you to this moment. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Casey Green. I have been Jared's Director of Tour Marketing for the last three years at Live Nation, and I'm also a Berkeley alum, so this is an extra special big deal. Um, for those of you that don't know Jared, this award is so, so, so well-deserved. Um, Jared is one of the most talented people I have ever worked with in my entire career. And the last three years of our working relationship have made such a tremendous impact on me, both personally and professionally. Um, I could not be more grateful. So my friend, my mentor, congratulations. I am so, so proud of you. I hope that you know what an honor it has been to be side by side with you for the last three years on everything we've worked for and everything you've accomplished. I really look forward to seeing what the future holds and congratulations for being a distinguished alumni of Berkeley College of Music. That is one of the coolest things ever and I'm super pumped for you, so congrats. Jared Braverman, determined, groundbreaking, the man behind the scenes. Your love of music and performance started at an early age. From the early concerts you attended as a boy, it was clear that you wanted to be more than an audience member. You wanted to be part of the action. Your meteoric rise from intern to the youngest senior vice president in Live Nation history is a testament to your ambition and vision for the future of live concert touring. While at Berkeley, 
You caught the attention of others with your strong work ethic and ingenuity. In my class, I had a project. The students have to do a final report where they have to interview someone in the music industry. Jared wanted to interview Arthur Fogel, who is the CEO of Live Nation Global Touring, a person who is known to not do interviews. He does Arthur's interview. At the end of the interview, Arthur inquires about what he, Jared plans to do after he leaves Berkeley. And he said, well, I'd like to do a internship in LA. And so Arthur said, I just booked the police's reunion tour and I'll need an assistant. From there, of course, the rest is history. Today, your impact on the industry is undisputed. Having led the tours of Coldplay, Ariana Grande, and BTS, to name a few, your tour portfolio has grossed over $1 billion. It is clear that the future of live concert touring is firmly in your grasp. Live Nation, of course, is the world's largest music promoter. And, uh, and there's Jared, you know, who has risen to be one of the key people in, uh, in their tours. Throughout your body of work, you shine brightest when helping others shine. You know what it takes to raise the bar, and your passion and kindness inspires others to follow you towards success. Jared Braverman. For your indomitable energy in crafting experiences for performers and audiences alike. For your ability to envision what can't be seen. And for your ongoing efforts to elevate the future of live concert touring. We recognize your achievement. Congratulations to Mindy and Jared. We are so happy to be able to kick off tonight's event sharing your incredible music, your hard work, and your ability to lift your fellow musicians alongside you. That ability to lift each other up is part of your musical DNA and your success in the industry. To speak more about this, I have the great pleasure of introducing Kathy Young, Executive Director of the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. Hi Fritz and good evening alumni. My name is Kathy Young and I'm the Executive Director of Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. It's my pleasure and honor to be with you tonight as we share in recognizing the great talent and achievements of our amazing alumni. As you've already witnessed, these alumni all share a deeply intentional pursuit of excellence. They also love to share their art with the world and especially their fellow artists. Whether in the studio, on the stage, or behind a camera, these alumni are master storytellers, able to take their audience on a journey emotionally, spiritually, and culturally. The ability to move people through intertwining music, spoken word, movement, theatrical performance is a unique and profound skill and a hallmark of some of the greatest contributions to the performing arts. Would we remember Motown quite as much without the dances the music inspired? Would Alvin Ailey's revelations have been as powerful without the music and lived experience which inspired it? Black spiritual music. Would Hamilton's spoken word have become such a worldwide phenomenon if it wasn't sung and staged in its current format? We know that music, theater, and dance have the ability to change individuals' lives, and when woven together in new and innovative ways to transform the very art forms themselves. Tonight, I have the great honor of recognizing two more brilliant alumni expanding their voices beyond a single medium who in their own way and style are once again moving the boundary of how we understand the impact of music, sound, movement, and theatrical stagecraft in our world, our community, and ourselves. Here is a little more about our honorees, Mike Masalam and Cheche Alara. Hi, I'm Harley Seeger. I graduated with my BFA in musical theater from the Boston Conservatory in 2020. In my sophomore year at the conservatory, I got cast in my first ever main stage production, and it was being directed by this really cool outside director who was an alum with a lot of amazing projects on his resume, and that was Mike. Mike cast me in my first main stage, and working with him was 
an absolute dream. My congratulations on this honor. You are so deserving and the work that you have been doing and are doing is important and impactful and such high quality. I'm so honored to know you both as a former director and also as a fellow BOCO alum. I think one sort of story that really sums up just how intentional and wonderful Mike is as a creative and as a collaborator is as the director of Sons of the Prophet at the Boston Conservatory, he did this thing I had never seen a director do both before or since, where he had these one-on-one -on -one meetings with every cast member multiple times throughout the process, checking in on us with the work we were doing, our character work, and just us as individuals and humans. And it meant the world to me. And I think I even cried during one of them because that's the kind of open space Mike creates everywhere he goes. So congratulations again, you are so deserving. I feel so, so honored to have worked with you and to know you and get to have you in my life. Congrats, Mike. Mike Masalam, director, producer, passionate storyteller. Early experiences in Dearborn, Michigan taught you how to walk the line between different cultures. However, your earnest care for others is what makes you want to bring cultures together. Your talent as a performer, writer, and auteur gives you a unique set of tools to express what it means to be gay, to be Muslim, and to be American. While at the conservatory, you were challenged to explore what it means to be Muslim in a post-9-11 America. You honed in on your identity and developed a one-man show, Muslim the Musical. This was the beginning of a career arc that set out to humanize the Arab experience and promote a feeling of community by teaching audiences and helping them see others in a different light. Seeing Mike's thesis project, Muslim the Musical, was one of the most profound theater experiences I've ever had. Mike's was in response to um, his personal experience as a, as a Muslim person in America after 9-11. And I remember sitting at the, in, the, in the theater after the show ended and just sitting there. It made me want to go and not just hug, not just hug Mike, right? And just say like, I see your humanity and thank you for bringing your humanity to the stage. Fueled with a newfound sense of direction, you continued bringing people together with your musical theater and comedy through your work with the Arab American Comedy Festival and Ann Arbor in Concert. You brought further exposure to Arab American life through your television work on Comedy Central's The Watch List in the TLC reality series, All American Muslim. The scope of his career is amazing to me. He directs musicals, he teaches musical theater, he is like an executive <laughs> and produces films, directs films, writes films. He's just an amazing artist. As your career developed, you continued to make your mark in storytelling as a filmmaker, working on the National Geographic Entertainment film, Amrika, producing Ubuntu with the Muslim Public Affairs Council, writing and directing Brothers, and now Breaking Fast. You've received multiple awards and film festival screenings, including the Outfest Fusion Film Festival, the Arab American Film Festival, as well as the Cannes Film Festival. Mike Masalam, for your enduring energy in creating an open and welcoming dialogue in the topics of politics, religion, and sexuality, for being your true self in life and behind the camera, and for helping others learn to be the masters of their own message, we recognize your achievement. Hi, my name is Cristina Avaroa, and I am a very proud Berkeley alumni. I met Checha Lara back in the late 90s. I was a production coordinator here in Los Angeles, California, where most of the recordings were happening, and I had the opportunity to call him for a couple of those sessions. Later on, I invited him to be my music co-producer and musical director for the Latin Grammy Person of the Year, honoring Placido Domingo, Shakira, Miguel Bosé, Caetano Veloso, and Alejandro Sanz. And it was amazing, we had a blast. Being a US Mexican woman, recipient of the Berkeley Alumni Achievement Award has been a huge honor for me. I know it's gonna be a huge honor for all the recipients this year. So all I can say is, Cheche, muchas felicidades. Cheche Alara, composer, producer, musical director, conductor, Renaissance man. 
The depth and breadth of your talent has made you the go-to person throughout the industry, be it film, television, radio, or stage. When you arrived at Berkeley in 1992, your eyes were opened to a whole new world. You took advantage of every learning opportunity, studying jazz piano at Berkeley College and classical piano at the Boston Conservatory. After Berkeley, you moved to LA to pursue a master's degree in jazz studies at the University of Southern California. What began as a short-term move to the West Coast turned into a lifelong journey in music making, and the rest is history. Early in your career, persistence paid off when you became the keyboard player for Christina Aguilera. From there, you crossed paths with bigger acts and brighter stars as you moved from band member to music director, to orchestrator, to producer. When I think about Cheche, the thing that most comes to mind is that he is joyful. His personality and charm and talent all come out in his play. Uh, so when I hear him play, or when I have the opportunity to work with him, it's a real blast because he is genuinely able to translate his personality through the music, through the instrument, and a consummate professional, because if you're not a consummate professional, you don't get the opportunities that he's had, and you don't achieve the success that he's had, and you don't receive the accolades and awards that he has. In 2017, you won your first Latin Grammy for producing Natalia Laforcade's album, Musas. In 2018, you repeated your win for Musas Volume 2. In 2019, you won a Grammy for Best Latin Pop Album for your work with Claudia Brand. But that's not all. Your passion for music continues to be a driving force. Whether you're the music director of the Grammy's premiere ceremony, playing the keys on a friend's recording, or scoring the latest television series. Cheche Alara, for your boundless ability to find success throughout the music business, for your compassionate leadership within the industry, and for modeling what it means to be a 21st century musician. We recognize your achievement. What an amazing pair of college and conservatory alumni. Whether it be in the studio, stage, or screen, our recipients celebrate openness and partnership. Speaking of partnership, here tonight to share their talents is Berkeley alumni Delfina Cheb and Javier Limon, performing a song originally sung by Natalia Laforcada and produced and arranged by tonight's award recipient, Cheche Alara. Ha pasado tanto tiempo, finalmente descubrí tus besos Me enredaste en tu mirada, me abrazaste con todos mis defectos Tú sí sabes quererme, tú sí sabes adorarme Mi amor, no te vayas, quédate por siempre, para siempre, para siempre amarte Corazón, tú sí sabes Quererme como a mí me gusta Soy la flor encendida que da color al jardín de tu vida Corazón, tú sí sabes Quererme como a mí me gusta Por favor, no me dejes que soy valiente En corresponderte Que ha pasado tanto tiempo Finalmente sé que estoy dispuesta Es tan difícil encontrar un amor Que aquí me quedo con heridas bien abiertas Ya no me importa lo que piensen los demás Aquí me quedo para ser testigo siempre de la vida Aquí por siempre, para siempre Para siempre amarnos 
Corazón, tú sí sabes quererme como a mí me gusta. Soy la flor escondida que da color al jardín de tu vida. Corazón, tú sí sabes quererme como a mí me gusta. Por favor, no me dejes que soy valiente en corresponderte. Corazón, tú sí sabes quererme como a mí me gusta. Soy la flor encendida que da color al jardín de tu vida. Corazón, tú sí sabes quererme como a mí me gusta. Por favor, no me dejes que soy valiente en corresponderte. Thank you, Delfina and Javier, for such a beautiful performance. And special thanks to Cheche Alara for helping create such rich and everlasting music. Now I have the great honor of introducing Berkeley President Roger H. Brown. As most of you know by now, Roger will be leaving Berkeley at the end of June. In his 17 years at Berkeley, Roger has expanded scholarship support by 400%, created an international campus in Valencia, Spain, built Berkeley's first ground-up building at 160 Massachusetts Avenue and merged with the Boston Conservatory. The institution has also expanded its global reach to attract students from over 100 countries, markedly improved gender and racial diversity, dramatically increased admissions selectivity, and created the world's largest online music education system. Beyond all the work Roger has done, he has remained committed to one of the central pillars of success in the music industry, creating strong and lasting relationships. I know so many of you have had the opportunity to meet Roger and his wife Linda over the years. Their tireless dedication to music and the arts leave Berkeley in a position of strength for the next generation of musicians and artists. So here to talk more about Berkeley, and introduce tonight's final recipients is none other than Roger Brown. Thanks, Fritz, and hello, Berkeley alumni. I'm excited to be here with you. The biggest strength of this place are our alumni, and tonight we're honoring a handful of incredible people who are changing the face of the music and performing arts industries. When Berkeley's founder, Larry Burke, started his teaching studio 75 years ago, he embraced the idea of improvisation. While film and radio were around then, television was only in its infancy. He believed that these new media created new opportunities for musicians, but never in his wildest dreams could he have predicted the explosion of music for TV and film, not to mention music for video games, VR and AR content, high def, 4K, 3D music, all of which have since been born and proliferated. What Larry did know was that an innovative music school that focused on embracing the music of the day was a powerful way to teach and a means to create professional opportunities for alumni. What a year we've had, just over a full year of remote teaching and learning, of Zoom calls stretching out over the horizon, blurring one day's work into the next. Despite all the challenges, I am so proud of how Berkeley has responded. It helps to have improvisation in your DNA. This summer, we'll return to an in-person summer semester, and I'm optimistic that by fall, we'll be back to a more normal on-campus experience for our students. And applications for the fall are very strong. We admitted a record number of applicants in the early action process due to the strength of the talent pool. And I know many of those uh, applicants come from you. On the scholarship front, as you know, the Thrive Scholarship was created to support upper semester students who came to Berkeley and didn't receive a large amount of financial support, but are making good grades and progressing towards on-time completion of their degrees. We've awarded more than $10 million through Thrive, and we expect the program to continue growing. It's already shown to improve retention and graduation rates and lower student debt. Overall, more than $80 million in scholarships and financial aid is targeted for the 2022 fiscal year. That's an increase of more than a quarter in the last five years, all part of a larger strategy to make the institution more affordable. Fundraising has been strong as well. 
Boston Conservatory at Berkeley received the biggest gift in our history this year, an, an estate gift that will come in at slightly over $4 million. And the college has received many multi-million dollar gifts this year, despite the fact that the past year has been so challenging. As you know, we started Berkeley Online 20 years ago, and since then it's grown into the largest online music education program in the world. Revenues and number of students at Berkeley Online are up over 40% versus last year. And I know many of you have taken courses through Berkeley Online. A few of you actually teach and design courses for Berkeley Online. And our massive open online courses, MOOCs, delivered through Coursera and edX are burgeoning as well. This is one of the most important initiatives of the last two decades and builds on Larry Burke's spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship. Berkeley NYC, Power Station just completed its amazing renovation and is back open for business and has already hosted recording sessions for artists like Christian McBride, Her, and Grace Kelly. And we're looking forward to the fall launch of our new Master of Arts in Creative Media and Technology. We're excited about the Master of Specializations and other programs at the New York campus and what they offer not only to Berkeley students but to the larger community of New York City. And there's some other great news. We surpassed 300 million views on our YouTube channel, which makes us the number one university YouTube channel in the world. We just surpassed Stanford, Harvard, and MIT. And we also surpassed the 300 Grammy mark, with wins this year by Danilo Perez, Jillian Welch, David Rawlings, and engineer David Greenbaum. Berkeley alumni have now won a total of 310 Grammy awards, our Latin Grammy count stands at over 100. In addition, alumni have won awards for teaching, for music therapy, and for a variety of contributions to the larger world. I do want to take a moment to discuss what I believe is one of the most important priorities while we're suffering through this pandemic of a virus. As a nation and the world, we've become painfully aware of the epidemic quality of racism, discrimination, and sexism all the ways in which we dehumanize one another. Berkeley's made a strong commitment to continue improving to not only be an anti-racist place, but a pro-human place that recognizes that every single student, staff member, faculty member deserves respect. We're working hard to re-examine all the ways we can be a better school. For example, Terry Lynn Carrington's Institute for Jazz and Gender Justice is having a profound impact, not just on Berkeley, but the larger music world. We're asking that you join us in that effort to help make sure that Berkeley is the best place it can possibly be for all our students who come to us from all around the world. And now I have the great pleasure of introducing tonight's final two recipients, Tony Maserati and Delphio Marsalis. As you can imagine, they have each carved such strong and unique paths inside and outside the music world. Let's hear a little more about each. Hi, my name is Andre Radu. I'm a fourth semester music production and engineering student, and it's my honor and privilege to introduce Tony Maserati. Tony's a huge inspiration, not just for me, but for countless other young audio engineers with his groundbreaking plugins, industry leading techniques, and not to mention 10 Grammy nominations. He's a huge role model and definitely someone we can all strive to be. Thank you so much, Tony. Congratulations, and we can't wait to see what you do in the future. Tony Maserati, mixer, innovator, artist. You began your music career as a performer and songwriter, but it would be your ear, not your voice, that would kick off a long string of commercial success receiving 10 Grammy nominations, a Grammy, a Latin Grammy, and over 100 million units sold. Your time at Berkeley opened your eyes to the world of music production and engineering, revealing a newfound passion for the technical side of music. There are three ingredients that make a world-class producer and engineer in our business, and those would be an absolute technical mastery of your tools, of course. Secondly, a musical compass that allows you to achieve the artist's vision. And lastly, just being a good person. You know, someone that you can spend 18 hours a day with in windowless rooms and, uh, and have a long and fruitful career just because you are a good person. And certainly for me, Tony Maserati ticks all these boxes. After Berkeley, you went to Sigma Sound Studio in New York where you worked with the likes of Whitney Houston and James Brown. 
While most of your contemporaries focused on the recording side of engineering, you gravitated towards the mix. Where others were dismissive, you embraced the rule-breaking techniques coming out of hip-hop and R&B. You established a relationship with Puff Daddy and Bad Boy Records, where you helped pioneer the East Coast sound, mixing for Mary J. Blige, Faith Evans, Notorious B.I.G., Busta Rhymes, KC and JoJo, and Mariah Carey, amongst others. We're so happy to uh, see Tony recognized in this way and uh, uh, receive this award from Berkeley. He's been a mentor to the next generation. Uh, obviously, in addition to blazing the trail, really defining a sound in the industry, being at the intersection of technology and music, Tony really looms large in, uh, in the industry and certainly as a, as a Berkeley alum. Today, you are celebrated for your resiliency, your client relationships, and your painterly approach towards mixing, starting with broad strokes and finishing with the fine details. You've grown with technology, developing a hybrid mixing method, incorporating both digital and analog equipment in your work. You're always forward thinking, looking for ways to not only enhance the sound of music, but also the people who work in the industry. Tony Maserati, for the mastery and skill you bring to your craft, for pushing new music beyond the limits of capability, and for always seeking to raise the value of music, we recognize your achievement. Hi, my name is Christian Fagan. Congratulations to Delphio Masales. You have been chosen for this year's Alumni Achievement Award. Well deserved. You're an amazing musician, producer. It was great working with you in Canada. And thank you for the love of your family to jazz and keeping jazz at the forefront and wish you all the best. Delphio Marsalis, the New Orleans artist with deep family roots in the original stained glass trombone. As a sixth grader, you chose the trombone to be the peacekeeper between Winton's trumpet and Branford's sax. There is no doubt that music courses through your veins, but your artistry is what allows you to weave the story of a black family from the South and what it means to be a black man in America. At Berkeley, you were determined to make your own mark, not only honing your craft as a trombonist, but also enhancing your skills in recording and producing. When I came to Berkeley in 87, Delphio was already here, a part of the community. And uh, he was a, a person that everyone knew. And by the time I got to know him, he was really all about, I'm, pro I'm producing and I'm looking for singers and vocalists. And I kind of went, hey, who, 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 who is this person? I just remember him being so excited and so passionate to the point where the singers would say, oh, here he comes, <laughs> because he was always looking always searching for different voices, you know, to help create the sound that he had in his mind and how he wanted to bring it to, to fruition. Throughout your career, you've been known for your respectful competition, always eager to hear new work from your contemporaries, and equally as eager to show them your special brand of gumbo. Beyond your talent, your reputation has led you to play with the likes of Art Blakey, Slide Hampton, Ray Charles, Fats Domino, and Harry Connick Jr. In addition to the over 1,000 recordings you've produced and the work in your own band, the Uptown Jazz Orchestra, you've sought to uplift and support your community through founding the youth organization, the Uptown Music Theater, and most recently, Keep New Orleans Music Alive, a foundation to financially support local musicians during the COVID-19 pandemic. Without a doubt, your dedication to the music and its people is the reason why you are one of the most influential people in jazz today. I'm very happy and pleased to say congratulations to my classmate, my bandmate, and my good friend Delphio Marcellus on this award. Throughout your career, you've uh, not only shown excellence as a musician, as a person, as a writer, but your commitment to the legacy of jazz and the remembrance of all these great 
Musicians has always been evident in all that you do. I want to say congratulations. I'm very happy and proud for you at this moment. And I look forward to the next time we have a chance to play. God bless and all the best. Delphia Marsalis. For your tireless efforts to support those around you, whether on stage or in the community, for your innovative approach to recording and producing music, and for adding your own special sauce to the world of jazz, we recognize your achievement. Congratulations again to Tony and Delphio and tonight's entire slate of honorees. You all are an inspiration to me and the whole Berkeley community. Now this is the last time I'm gonna be part of the Alumni Achievement Awards. I'll be leaving soon, June 30th. And I just wanted to close tonight's event with a few thoughts uh, about my 17 years of experience here. This has been an amazing, amazing job for me, uh, more than a job. I've loved it so much. And I think the thing I've loved most is getting to know you all, getting to hear your music, getting to experience the triumphs you've had, getting to see you be so strong and resilient when things didn't break your way and what can be a very unforgiving uh, field. Uh, I've gotten to know some of your families. Uh, it's just been a great joy to me. I've enjoyed every minute of it. And I'm reminded of both a poem and a song. The great Indian poet and playwright R Rabindranath Tagore said, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and realized life is duty. I went to work and made myself of service and realized that duty can be joy. And I have gotten so much joy from my work at Berkeley. And the song I thought of, which I'm going to paraphrase, is of course by Joni Mitchell. And in just a few weeks, I'll be a free man in Paris. I'll be unfettered and alive. There'll be nobody calling me out for favors or no one's future to decide. I'm going to miss that. I'm going to miss you. But uh, I'll feel forever connected to you and bonded to you through my experience here. Thank you so much for all the the, the joy you've given me. Hello, Roger, this is Abraham, wishing you the best from this point on. I love you. I have nothing but gratitude and admiration for you. Hi, Roger, thank you for all the work and all the love you gave to Berkeley. I want to thank you personally for the efforts that you made to make me feel seen, important, acknowledged, and supported while at Berkeley. Hey Roger, I just wanted to take an opportunity to say thank you for always being so kind and so generous and being such a wonderful leader for all things Berkeley. Roger Brown, I really can't believe you're leaving Berkeley. I actually wish you were there when I was a student at Berkeley because after we got together later on, became friends and you, you know, we talked about a lot of things and it made me understand and realize what Berkeley was what it still is, what it has improved to be, and how important the alumni of Berkeley, all the people that I know and that I'm in careers with, a lot of people came from Berkeley and you made me kind of understand how large this whole thing is. Uh, we never played, you and I, we never jammed in a room, we never did a gig, we never like really kicked it, so hopefully in your future, that maybe that might even happen. Hey Roger, Gavin Larson here. I just want to say thanks so much for everything you've done for the Berkeley College of Music community. You have changed the Boston skyline in the interest of music students and music professionals the world over. You've really worked hard to make sure that our college degrees and credentials retain their utmost value out there in the field. And most importantly, you've worked very hard to make sure that there's a great bond between the professionals and the students, and that makes for a very healthy industry. Hey Roger, it's me, Renee. Thank you so much for giving me my first job out of college. I'm so proud to have been on your team and a part of all the wonderful work you did to help Berkeley become the place it is today. Congratulations on your next adventure. I love you. Thank you, Roger, Kathy, our many distinguished faculty and guests. It's been such a privilege to have you all here tonight. To close tonight's program, we are honored to welcome back Delphio Marsalis and the Uptown Jazz Orchestra for one last spicy kick. Good night, stay well, and we look forward to seeing you and sharing your amazing accomplishments real soon. Funky drummer, what you got for us?
Oh yes indeed y'all, welcome to New Orleans y'all With Uptown Jazz Orchestra, Mardi Gras 2021 We coming virtual reality baby Oh yes indeed, we gonna make it do what it do Come on y'all, put your hands together We are so new Like syncopated beats with uptown grooves. When you hear that big bass drum, yeah, you can't help but move. I'm so New Orleans, from the West Bank to the East. No matter where you live, drop that beat, we buck jump in the street. I'm so New Orleans, I be pretty as Wild Chopper to this Mardi Gras day. When you hear this uptown funk, yeah, you know we coming to slay. I'm so New Orleans, I've been wearing a mask since way last spring. I wear with pride the way King Bacchus be wearing his Mardi Gras bling. I'm so New Orleans, I know what Mardi Gras really means. Seeing family and friends, black mask and Indians, and of course the Zulu King. I'm so New Orleans, I'm really digging all these new decorated house floats. All we need to do is add a little music, grab, come on, play some of them funky notes. Place my fancy clothes. Let me find out you still out in the streets. And let me find out you chasing puck jump beats. We gotta mass up to get it under control. And that's the only way to see another parade roll. Yeah, we miss the Indians and Mighty Gras parades, brass bands, baby dolls celebrating the dead. Uptown, we gonna do what we do. Bringing all that New Orleans culture to you. Uptown, downtown, night watching me. Come on, brother Del, tell me what you gonna say. 